Well, good morning, Frederick. Uh, I'm back another day. We made it. Uh, a quick thank you to everybody who reached out yesterday, tuned in, left comments, called, texted, and messaged, um, or otherwise gave me feedback about the show. I'm so thankful for that. And I'm excited about what's to come. Um, I think that uh, this is a great platform and we've got a great opportunity to reach a lot of people here in Frederick. So I'm really excited about that. And I appreciate those of you who are coming along for the ride. Um, again, this is, uh, this is really a lot of fun for me. And um, yeah, I, I'm really looking to engage a little bit more. So you'll notice in the show description, or you may not have noticed, I've actually put the link where you can join me live on the show today. So if you have, and we'll do this every day from now on, because really this show is all about you uh, more than it is about me. Um, so maybe you have uh, something to share, a kid's birthday or some great news of any kind. Uh, just click the link. You'll be hanging out in the green room until I bring you live into the show. And uh, I think this would be kind of fun. So I do have a, a quick uh, release button just in case. So mind your manners. But anyway, no, if you're a new business, if you just moved to Frederick, um, really, this is kind of the extension of the group, everything Frederick and more. And, uh, you know, I, this is what it's all about. So. Anyway, just want to thank you, and I want to say thank you to the sponsor of this show, Frederick Window Tinting, locally owned. They're located right on Metropolitan Drive, serving Frederick with automotive, commercial, and residential window tint solutions. Plus, they do a whole lot more. The Volpes are amazing. Uh, if you don't know Sharon and Joe, you should go down and say hi to them. I want to thank them. FrederickWindowTinting.com, and I am Danny Gurry, your host. Uh, for Good Morning Frederick, and uh, it's live in the Everything Frederick and More group on Facebook, and we're also on YouTube. We also posted a couple things to TikTok as well, so you can find little snippets of information there. So I want to thank you guys so much. Okay, weather today, gosh, I'm so sorry, kids. If you are in town for your spring break, uh, not so great as far as the weather is concerned, but hey, you know, there is always uh, movie theaters and indoor fun to get your uh, energy out. Uh, today, periods of rain, thunderstorms, the th thunderstorms have been crazy. My poor dog is freaking out every morning. Uh, supposed to hit 58. Uh, with a low tonight of 47. Tomorrow, more rain and a high of 59. Thursday, cloudy and windy, high of 55. Friday, cloudy, windy, chilly with temps uh, getting to uh, 50 as well. Saturday, they're actually calling for a mix of snow early in the day as the temps dip to 33 overnight, but a high of 54. Uh, P.S. Monday looks amazing. So if you have any PTO, you might want to take it because it's supposed to be a high of 70. And actually I do know a couple people who might be uh, taking a day off. And I don't blame you because when the weather is nice and the sun comes out, there's nothing more that I like than to uh, enjoy it, to be outside. Um, if you have a great story to share, I wanna hear it. Uh, if you know of someone helping to make Frederick the awesome place it is, you can email uh, everything Frederick live at gmail.com, or you can also text and the number is right there. We've got the number and you can follow us and stuff like that. It's 888-465-2944. I'm watching my other screens here. Uh, so I can see if you guys text in, I can actually respond. So, um, you'll notice every now and then I might, uh, turn my head over here just to see. So anyway, Send me a text. Let me know you're out there. 888-465-2944. All right. This next segment, we like to bring out the good stuff that's happening, and we call it the Feel Good Five. And first, 
I would like to uh, share a great event that's going on here in Frederick. And if you don't have your tickets yet, we'd love you to go. Yeah, Frederick is made up of, I think, 2,500 nonprofits. And I am here today with Brian from one of them, the Frederick Rescue Mission. Hi, Brian. How are Hi. you? I'm good. Well, how are you? I'm great. And we're here to talk about Super Sunday. Yeah. And this uh, fundraiser has been going on quite a while to benefit the Frederick Rescue Mission. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how the program or uh, the fundraiser works and how it benefits the rescue mission and people in Frederick. Yeah, we, um, we partner with about uh, eight different restaurants uh, and then we make soup ourselves as well. Uh, and the restaurants donate the soup. Mm -hmm. All you can eat soup and salad and dessert uh, at, and uh, everybody also gets a handmade uh, bowl, a handmade yeah. uh, ceramic bowl from uh, the little pottery shop. So I wonder how long it takes them because you have hundreds of people that come to this event, That's right? That's right. And they get together for days and they I just bet. work on making these bowls. And they're beautiful, beautiful yeah. little bowls. So uh, the, all the money that is raised through Super Sunday goes toward our food services. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we feed people a hot breakfast and lunch 365 days a year, regardless of holiday mm -hmm. or weather or anything. Wow. And then we, uh, we serve groceries to the community for free three days a week. Yeah. So it goes toward those programs and helping the community. Okay. Well, and I mean, that makes a huge impact in helping <laughs> out uh, the people of Frederick. Some of the uh, Restaurants that have donated soup. Oh my goodness, this makes it worthwhile as well. Brewer's Alley, Dutch's Daughter. Oh, do they do their cream of crab soup? That's one of my favorites. They did last year. Uh, yeah, FCC's mm -hmm. Monroe Center, which is the Hospitality, Culinary, and uh, Tourism Institute, the Rescue Mission, Hooch and Banner, The Orchard, Silver Diner, Wegmans, and Wine Kitchen all donate their most, uh, their soups. Yeah. They mu it must be a huge. I don't even can't it's even imagine how that yeah. how that goes, and yeah. of course you have some amazing sponsors who have uh, supported uh, this fundraiser, which is fantastic. So right. Sunday, April fourteenth, mm -hmm. noon to three. Now you need to get your tickets. Go to therescuemission.org. Mm -hmm. Tickets are forty five dollars, and that gets you the all you can eat and uh, and your handmade. Bowl. Yeah, so you get to pick your handmade bowl. They I saw they had huge tables with them. You can choose whichever one you like, and they're mm -hmm. all a little bit different. Oh yeah, right, because they're all handmade. Right, you get that. You can go, once you get your ticket, anytime between the noon to three time period. It's at Union Mills, which is located right on Carroll Creek, kind of down near Idiom Brewing, uh, right past uh, East Street there. Yeah, and, weather uh, permitting, you can actually sit right on the creek as well. Oh, yeah, that would be if fantastic. Day, Fingers crossed for that. It could right. be, could be. So Super Sunday, benefiting the Frederick Rescue Mission, mm -hmm. supporting the great mission that this organization organization does feeding people right here in Frederick. Yep. Brian, we appreciate you spending some time with us Yeah, today. my pleasure. See you there. All right. Yeah, so this is a great event. Uh, get your tickets. They're available now. Uh, and know that you're helping to feed hundreds of people a day right here in Frederick. And if you haven't been to the Frederick Rescue Mission recently to volunteer or take a tour, you should. I got the pleasure of going. Uh, Jasmine took me uh, on a great tour. I didn't even realize all of the things that the rescue mission does. Uh, they're expanding and, uh, you know, changing those programs all the time. But the food distribution that they do, the clothing that they do. One thing I do love, if you're looking to donate clothing, um, nothing against uh, the other clothing donation companies, but the rescue mission does not resell your clothing. They actually give them to people who need them. So um, yeah, if you're looking for a place to donate, you can donate in the big bins that are right outside. They're right on South Street, you'll see them. I just, I do have to say to uh, Jasmine, I have to give some feedback. I went to donate clothing the other day. First of all, I'm only about 5'3". And the, the handle, when you put it down, you're trying to lift your bagging of clothing in it, little bit cumbersome, little bit difficult. So sometimes you might want to wait till they're open. Maybe you can just drive right up and drop them off uh, in the little area right beside uh, the house that you see the rescue mission housed in. But of course, uh, we are always happy to donate to that organization. And um, yeah, if you can do that, that's great. 
And, you know, this group, Everything Frederick and Moore, is so strong and powerful. We have a huge voice here in this town. And um, we, we really want you to know that every time you give, you actually receive. And so I am asking for your help in giving the clients of the Scott Key Center a prom. Um, I'm really, I, they're very excited by this and uh, I am as well. And I've had a few people already text me or contact me that have prom dresses or other kind of formal type wear. And I'm so appreciative and I will make sure that goes to um, one of the high school students that we have who has reached out to us needing a, um, a dress for their upcoming prom or certainly one of the clients of Scott Key Center. But right now, what I'm asking for your help for is if you can possibly donate even $10, I'm trying to raise about $1,500 to cover the food for the 125 guests. Now, I have had some people reach out asking if they can donate food. And to be honest, what I would love to do, the Ark of Market Street has donated the entire facility. Uh, what I would like to do is purchase the food directly from them so that they do get something out of this wonderful uh, event. So uh, I do need the money for it. There's 125 guests and we're coming up with a menu for them, but it'd be about $1,500. So if you can donate even $10, I would love for you to go to uh, the Scott Key Center, uh, scottkeycenter.org. It's on the screen, scottkeycenter.org. And there's a donate button at the top and whatever you can give, we would be very, very grateful um, to, to that. And so again, not only for them, but we also have families who have reached out to us through everything Frederick and more who need uh, dresses to wear to their proms, which come up in May. So we don't have a lot of time. So if you have a dress, we will first reach out to the uh, students from Frederick High, uh, the Frederick local area high schools and make sure that they get outfitted first because the Scott Key prom isn't until June. So I have a little bit more time to work on them and getting them clothing and I can find more sizes and things like that. So if you have a dress, uh, let's help out the young ladies from the local high schools who would like to attend their proms and uh, we will make that happen. So you can email me everything frederick live at gmail.com or of course you can text 888-465-2944 all right be sure to save that text number because we're also giving away some prizes today again we're, we'd love uh, another family to go uh see the flying cows take on montreal sunday april 14th the team is back at 3 p.m at hood college arena so just text me just even say good morning and i will uh get you a pair of tickets to see the cows because it's so fun. And if you haven't been yet, you must go and you have to come say hi when you do. That's the only stipulation I have. All right, coming up after the break, we are going to talk to the owners, Rob and Robin from Intense Barbecue. All in One Events is Frederick's number one source for event rentals and entertainment. Please visit us on the web at www.aioeventgroup.com or call 1-888-727-8902 for more information. All right. We want to thank, of course, the Goddess Group of Real Estate and All in One Events for sponsoring this program, taking a risk on us, and uh, I really appreciate that. All right, so again, so many events, so little time to keep them all organized. Uh, I just wanna thank Taco Bar in Frederick for sponsoring Happenings in Frederick today. Taco, it's Taco Tuesday, everybody. So if you need an idea for dinner, this is perfect. Taco Tuesday is 20% off three tacos at Taco Bar. They're located right at West Point Plaza on Route 40, kind of between Route 40 and Alternate 40 there. Um, we want to thank them for that. And uh, yeah, so tons happening in Frederick. We have created a calendar that is available to you 
And it's one place that you can go to find all the great things happening. This is what it'll look like when you go there and you can click on each of those events. And uh, if you have an event you want to be uh, on the calendar, you can email or text it to us again. Uh, if you need a link to this calendar, just text the word calendar to 888-465-2944 and you're gonna get a link right to it. And that way you'll have access to it at any time. Uh, we'll talk about a couple of those events right after this. All right, so tonight at 7 p.m., there's two for Tuesday karaoke at the Orioles Nest, located off Route 40, right behind, uh, kind of on the backside of Burlington Coat Factory, so you can really access it off Key Parkway pretty easily. But tonight, you get to sing two songs in a row, and I'd love to see video of that, actually. Uh, Friday night, 7 p.m. at the American Legion in Thurmont. It's Cancer Dancer Line Dancing, benefiting St. Jude's. You can attend that. And this Saturday, it is first Saturday in downtown Frederick this weekend. Also coming up soon, Battle of the Bands is coming to the Carroll Creek Amphitheater on April 27th. It is an all-ages, family-friendly show though there will be some adult beverages on hand for that that you can purchase. Uh, Everything Frederick & More is proud to be a major sponsor of this event, and you're going to be able to sit out there and watch six bands competing to win a $5,000 prize package, which is excellent. Tickets are just $10 for adults. Children five and up are just $5, and uh, kids under five are free. Uh, all the proceeds benefit the Boys and Girls Club of Frederick County, and we think that is awesome. Go get your tickets. It's B-O-T-B, Battle of the Band, Frederick.com. B-O-T-B, Frederick.com is where you can get your tickets. And the link and all the details are also on that calendar we just told you about. So if you need to see that calendar, um, just text the word calendar to our toll-free number. Now, if you have an event that you want included on the calendar, all you got to do is email it to me at everythingfredericlive at gmail.com. All right, now it's time to talk about the group Everything Frederick and More. All right, we want to thank Dublin Roasters for sponsoring this segment. It is the Frederick Coffee House, fueled by love and positivity. Visit Dublin Roasters at 1780 North Market Street or at DublinRoastersCoffee.com. All right, the top post of the last seven days in the group Everything Frederick and More was Darlene suggesting that Frederick needed a Long John Silver restaurant. This cracks me up, actually. I do laugh at some of these, but over five hundred comments uh, were left on that post and it had a reach of more than 48,000 people. Uh, there's so many interesting posts in this group. Uh, so we're launching a show this Thursday evening. It's going to be once a week, Thursday nights at 8 p.m. called Top 5. And we're going to be talking to the people who created the post and get viewers input in real time. It should be a lot of fun. So you can join us for that, it's called Top 5. It's gonna air on Thursdays, right in the Everything Frederick group, and of course on YouTube, and uh, we're gonna be inviting people on. Now don't forget, if you wanna join the show, just look for the clip in the description um, on Facebook or on YouTube, and just click the link, and I'd love to have you on. I have no problems bringing you live on screen, so I think it would be a lot of fun. All right, wanna thank Shift, Work and Play, uh, the sponsor of our next segments. Shift Work and Play is Frederick's one and only co-working space designed to support those people who have young children but are still doing their jobs. Whether it's owning your own company or working remotely, you can get your work done while your children are supervised at play. Perfect for this time of week, I, I guess. You know, if you've got young kids on spring break, they're off of school, uh, you can you can head there. Now, your kids have to be 18 months to six years old, so maybe you're kindergartners. 
I love this concept and really wish it were around when I started my first company. Uh, my kids were four and two at the time. So they're now 18 and 20 though. So uh, they don't need that kind of supervision. Uh, every three hour play session uh, includes a planned activity plus some open-ended child-led play. Shift work and play has meeting rooms, dedicated desks, private office spaces, and is located close to downtown right on Northeast Street. You can book a tour today at shiftworkandplay.com. Awesome. So we want to thank them there. And I'm so excited because I get to talk to her, I think, this week. I've been doing so many interviews uh, with you guys, and I'm learning so, so many new businesses, and I'm meeting so many great people. Uh, yesterday, I talked to the owner of Jonah's Outdoor Furniture, and I know they're doing their grand opening uh, with the chamber ribbon cutting, I think, on Friday. So I'm going to scooch her interview early, earlier in the week, probably Thursday, so you can check it out. Oh, my gosh, if you guys are looking for outdoor furniture, you got to go there. Um, our community is powered by businesses large and small, and the collective contribute to the greater good, and I love that. Uh, these businesses all give back in so many ways, and uh, I just can't thank you guys enough for giving me your time, telling me about what you're doing, and uh, I'm so happy to have a small platform to be able to share your stories. Uh, my latest company is called Promo Circus. Primarily, it's a marketing consulting company helping businesses make the most of every marketing dollar because I do understand uh, how little money you might have access to to market, and you don't want to waste any of it. So my job is to help you find ways to do that creatively, to create engagement, and uh, kind of rise above all the noise. And there is a lot of noise in media and marketing right now. The program is just one of the efforts that I am doing uh, to do my part. But if your company needs a little help, let me know. I do give a lot of advice for free. So I'm happy to help if you're doing an event, if you need some brainstorming or anything like that, because we're all in this together. All right, now I'd love to uh, move on to listen to the story from Kelsey Kephart from the Arenda Center, who's doing great things here in Frederick as well. Here we go. Well, highlighting local business is one of the big passions of Good Morning Frederick. And today I've got Kelsey Kephart from the Arenda Center in Frederick. Um, I have actually worked with some of the people at the Arenda Center uh, with a clothing donation not too long ago. But why don't you tell us a little bit as the executive director and one of the founders why the Arenda Center uh, was started and um, why it's important for this community. So we started the Arenda Center um, almost five years ago, and we had a passion for being able to serve underserved populations in our community and giving them quality treatment. Um, one of our big things is trying to kind of think outside of the box, and that's kind of where our wellness um, perspective comes in. We try to, you know, incorporate various forms of treatment um, in the client's um, recovery process. So we do substance use um, and we also do mental health, which is really nice because our clients are able to get a full continuum of care while they're with us. Um, and then also while they're there, we... Not sure what happened there. Let me see if I can jump back into her. Oh, goodness gracious. Hold on. Let's see what we got. Nope. Okay. Love it. The buffering. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can get her back on. Hold on one sec. This, see, I'm looking around. It's something every single day. Every single day. Let's see what we got here, Renda. Okay. No idea what happened to her. And actually, I was also looking for uh, our um, video with Intense Barbecue, which let's see what we got here. This is hilarious. Okay, this is why. This is why I need all of my uh, things in one spot, which I obviously do not have. So 
All right, well, we'll move move right along while we're looking for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to give away these tickets to the uh, Flying Cows game. Again, you can tell, and I'm shocked sure nobody wants to join me on this train wreck that is today's show. It's going to be so much fun, and I do need people just to, you know, kind of help me get things moving along the way. So, um Again, I can't find uh, my videos all seem to have disappeared at the time that I need them to uh, to show up. Uh, let's see here. Burnside, we got that. Oh, here we go. All right. We're going to try to get back to Kelsey. Let's see if this well, highlighting local business here we is go. one of the big passions of Good Morning Frederick. And today I've got Kelsey Kephart from the Arenda Center in Frederick. Um, I have actually worked with some of the people at the Arenda Center uh, with a clothing donation not too long ago. But why don't you tell us a little bit as the executive director and one of the founders, why the Arenda Center uh, was started and um, why it's important for this community? So we started the Arenda Center um, almost five years ago, and we had a passion for being able to serve underserved populations in our community and giving them quality treatment. Um, one of our big things is trying to kind of think outside of the box, and that's kind of where our wellness um, perspective comes in. We try to, you know, incorporate various forms of treatment um, in the client's um, recovery process. So we do substance use um, and we also do mental health, which is really nice because our clients are able to get a full continuum of care while they're with us. Um, and then also while they're there, we we obviously provide um, clinical treatment, we provide medical services, but then we also provide things like yoga, meditation, we are getting ready to start acupuncture, and we just try to give them kind of that full spectrum of services while they're there with us. Um, when we first opened, we were one of the first inpatient facilities in the state to be female only. And for the first few years, we had our women's only inpatient and our outpatient services. Now we do have a male only inpatient treatment center as well. So um, okay. it's nice because they get to actually, you know, focus on themselves and yeah. get away from distractions. Well, we all know uh, living in any community, the more that we can do to assist people who are struggling, uh, the better the community is. So it is appreciated what you guys, uh, the task that you have at hand. Um, is there, was there any particular, um, I mean, I guess like in the starting of this, I mean, I don't even know how many uh, different programs are available uh, in the area, but, you know, I guess a little bit about kind of, you know, what what your goals are and, um, you know, growth opportunities, uh, which is unfortunate, but uh, that, that might be existing. So we, we just continue to try and provide our clients with compassionate care. That's a big thing for us. Um, you know, when we're hiring, we try to make sure that all of our employees have the same vision as we do, which is to genuinely care for the clients, enjoy doing what they do um, so that the clients feel loved. A lot of these people that come into treatment, um, you know, have been abandoned by their families. They have not felt love in a long time. So that's a, that's one of our big things. Um, sure. As far as um, growing and expanding, it's been kind of as the need arises. We, mm -hmm. like I said, started with the women's only and we had our outpatient where we did serve um, men, women, and adolescents. And um, there was always the question, why don't you have anything for men? So right. we, we got into that space kind of through seeing that there was a need and that there were requests for that. Um, we got a contract with Frederick County Public Schools for mental health services for the youngsters. And that was something that, you know, came as a need. They they were sure. very low on uh, therapists that were able to come into the schools and provide therapy. Um, so we're, we're kind of, we don't have something, you know, specific right now um, in mind as far as what we're going to do next. Um, yes. But we we just you know we want to just continue to be able to help people. Sure. What is your what do you see as the biggest challenge uh, for you? Uh, I guess maybe as an industry or you in particular, 
are there any challenges that you know have made it you know that you've addressed for the for the year or since you've opened um i think one of our biggest challenges um is that there's a lack of residential mental health treatment so we have a lot of clients that come to us that have more severe mental health um, concerns that are not like actively suicidal or actively homicidal so they don't qualify for going into the hospital and getting admitted to a psychiatric unit um, and there's not really a place for those people to go that's definitely one of yeah. our biggest struggles um, and it's 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 been difficult and it's something that we've kind of like learned um you know to work with but there is sure. a major need for that so do you guys uh in those cases work with other agencies in frederick to help do, do you guys all kind of work together if, if it's not something you can address yeah yeah we and we work actively with a lot of other um treatment centers with the local hospitals um yeah you know, trying to collaborate and do what we can. There, there's just really not um, a lot in that space, especially for clients that have Medicaid. That is primarily yeah. what we serve. Right. Um, as, as far as like uh, age range, uh, I'm really happy to hear that you are working with FCPS. I know, uh, you know, uh, adolescents in particular, especially post uh, pandemic, uh, struggled with a lot of mental health issues. And it was very difficult, uh, you know, and I know personally even to find treatment programs for people under 18. Do you guys, other than through FCPS, help kids who are under 18 or is it uh, mostly adults only? So in our outpatient, we do serve, um, for mental health, we serve children as young as five years old. Oh, for the, wow. for the substance use piece, we do 12 and up. So um, that's mostly the adolescents. Um, and that's only in the outpatient setting. So they, okay. they can come in um, and receive either outpatient um, substance use counseling, but we also have um, outpatient adolescent um, IOP, which is intensive outpatient. So yeah. That's, That's definitely a big you know, need. Yeah, you know, it's definitely something that, uh, again, is warrant is really needed in that uh, age range. So that's fantastic that you guys are are, are taking care of that. Um, if you know, for for those of us in the community, uh, like, what help can we provide as community members uh, to assist to make what you're doing a little bit easier? Or is there any assistance that you guys need? Um, I mean, us specifically, I don't think there's, um, you know, a need necessarily for our organization, but I think as a whole, um, the community just becoming more educated on substance use, um, knowing what to look for so that we can, you know, get more early intervention rather than people coming to us once it's far too late. Um, also, Narcan trainings, that's something that I've been extremely passionate about since even, you know, before I started Arenda. Um, everybody should be equipped with Narcan because that obviously saves lives. Um, and I think just really like trying to get that stigma about addiction out of our community. I think that's probably one of the biggest ways that we can be supported. Um, and not only us, but all of the people that are struggling with addiction and all the other treatment centers that are local or, you know, really anywhere in the country. I think that that stigma is still there. Unfortunately, it's definitely gotten a lot better because so many people have been affected by someone that they love um, struggling with substance use. But I, I think that learning about, um, addiction and understanding that it could happen to anybody is really important. For sure. And I do like how, um, I didn't even realize this until I was on your website, but the, uh, uh, the definition of Arenda is a force present in all people that empowers them to affect change in their own lives. I love that because obviously it, it kind of, I guess, um, says you're still in control even though you might feel out of control, that it is something that you have the power, people have the power to change. Um, now you guys uh, do a majority uh, of your um, clients, is it um, you know patient pay? Is it, uh, do you accept insurance? How does that work for people who may be needing to seek this sort of treatment? So we primarily serve the Medicaid population. So okay. 
they Medicaid does pay for the services that we provide. Um, and we, we also do have clients that are self-pay. We have some clients that do have some commercial insurance, but I would say about 90% of our clients do have state insurance. Okay. And if a family is in a situation now or a person who's watching this is currently struggling, like what, what is the next steps that they would need to take is, you know, do you have, uh, availability uh, to take on a residential or right now it's outpatient? Yeah, so we have um, availability usually within a week of calling for inpatient or outpatient services. And if for some reason we don't have availability, we are able to usually refer them to somewhere else that does. Um, outpatient is a, you know, a little bit easier to get into um, than the inpatient services, but we can usually get, like I said, someone in within a week. Yes. And is the process, uh, is it typically, do do clients come in as, a, for instance, if you didn't have an availability for the residential, could they start as an outpatient until something becomes available? Is that kind of the process or they just really go either direction and, and stick with that? Um, so they could do that just depending on um, the severity of what's going on. If somebody is sure. like extremely unstable, then we would obviously not recommend that. And um, yeah. a lot of times what, what we do in those situations, like where someone's waiting for a bed to get in, um, is either refer them to a higher level of care, like a detox or uh, refer them to the hospital. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this has been fascinating. It's really, again, I think the what you guys provide um, obviously is a, a huge need in every community, but we're happy that you're here in Frederick. And, uh, you know, we look forward to more great things that you guys are doing. And uh, we appreciate the time you took with me today. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, I wanna thank Kelsey. Sorry about that screw up on the uh, video, but uh, look, the Arenda Center is doing a lot of great things for the community in the sense that, you know, they're helping out those who need it. And we love, we love that about uh, about them. And I think it's pretty fascinating that she started that organization as well. Uh, all right, now let's get to, I've got to find the old video file for Intense Barbecue. Uh, I, I think Intense might've been one of the first barbecue or food trucks that uh, I interviewed when we launched Foodie Friday on Key 103. And uh, I had and have never forgotten their uh, barbecue parfait. And if you haven't gotten it from them, you must. It is everything in one container, including the coleslaw and the barbecue and beans and so delicious. But uh, let's hear from here Rob with and Robin. Rob and Robin from Intense Barbecue. And uh, look, I think you guys have done an amazing job kind of uh, bringing amazing barbecue to not just Frederick, but all over. Thank you. You're welcome. The truck looks amazing. Uh, I think since we've met, you got the addition of the, the bigger towing vehicle. Yep, we added the bus. Yes, added the bus. Tell us how it all kind of got started. Um, intense barbecue started as a hobby that got a little crazy. Yeah. Um, we started out doing youth sports for the Linganore Luya program, which we're right. very proud to still be a part of very after good. all of these years. Yeah. And we spent what, 10 years down in Howard County. Yeah. Howard County Parks. Yep. And just, we're, we're very fortunate. We've got a great customer base and yeah, you guys have really worked hard now. You guys also have started uh, a food truck page on uh, Facebook. Yes, ma'am. Everything Frederick Food Trucks, right, is the name of it. So, you know, for people who are looking to book food trucks, they can actually go there and put their requests, Yep. which kind of helps to weed out things, uh, you know, yep. or, or kind of target the right group of people. And you guys, how many people... As far as food trucks, do you think you have on that page? I'm not sure about the page. Um, it's still underutilized. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of new trucks, so it's still getting to, to them. Yep. Um, I think there's somewhere around 100 food trucks licensed in Frederick Holy County. Holy cow. I mean, I remember the day when the food truck was something so new and different, and, and now it's really... Yeah. Gives, it's given an opportunity, I think, for people to 
open their own restaurant in a, in yep. a smaller scale and kind of control how they how they go. There have been a lot of a lot of people that started out in the food trucks and have went on to open a restaurant. Yeah. You got 50-50 and boxcar right. and yeah, that's Betas. very true. Betas, yeah. Betas, Arepa. Yeah. Arepa. Love it. Soon Love to it. be whistle punk. Yeah, soon to be whistle punk up in front. Yeah, Prospect. I know, I know. Uh, now, getting to the food. Yes, ma'am. One of the things I remember most, the very first thing I had from you was the meat parfait, the barbecue yep. parfait, which I still is one of my favorite walk around full meals in a cup. Is that still a seller? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. And that and the barbecue fries are probably two of our most popular items. Barbecue fries. Oh, so it's like a pile on? on French fries oh. with either pork or brisket on top. We Gosh. do the Miss Cheryl's fries. It has spicy sauce, jalapenos, and cheese. Love it. Love it. Uh, anything new coming for you guys this year? Are there any goals that you're trying to hit? Just a... Uh, try and have as good a year as we had last year and the okay. year before and yeah. you know in these crazy times yeah and do you know how many events you've done since the launch of the truck i have no idea <laughs> so i was hoping like maybe we could celebrate your like 500 1500th <laughs> i wouldn't even i really wouldn't even want to guess honestly <laughs> a lot <laughs> what would you say is the biggest challenge of having a food truck for you guys Finding the right venue for what we do. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of food trucks, and we're all the same, but we're all different. Mm -hmm. Some of us are geared towards higher volume events. Some are geared towards more specialty food and so forth and so on. And yeah. We all have the challenge of finding something that's a good fit for us. Yeah. Because... A good fit for me might not be a good fit for somebody else. Right. If that right. makes sense. Yeah. What is your proudest moment over the past few years? Come on, help <laughs> me out here, honey. <laughs> you know, I don't, I really don't know that there's any one moment. We, okay. this will be our 13th or 14th year with the Urbana Carnival yep. doing their pork and uh, pulled pork and pit beef. Yep. Um, 13th or 14th year at Lake Langenor with their food nice. truck events. Yeah. Um, seeing other people like Aaron start out and, and be successful yeah. and, you know, being part of his journey and Kyle's way back when, when he got his first little snow cone cart and started <laughs> yeah. with that. Now he's got the trailer. Yeah. Well, I think that that is one thing about you guys that I've noticed over the years is you have really mentored kind of wrapped your arms around a lot of these other people which is really great to see that support and that you know cheering on people who could be kind of deemed as your competitor though not obviously in the same uh realm i just think that's awesome yeah we the food truck community in frederick is really good and there's there's quite a few of us that work together some of us i probably talk to mike from grilled cheese at least twice a week yeah. and yeah. You know, even even Mike Scahill with Old Fireman's Barbecue, I talk to him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You know? All right. Get, we, uh, some of us get together. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Especially in the wintertime. Yeah. To just kind of exactly. you know, talk it out and see what, what's what and what's going to happen with, like I said, the Hunter Future, you know, those big yeah. trucks, what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And share ideas. See, you know, what works for us and, you know, maybe you can help other people have, have more successful events or things go a little smoother. Yeah. If there was one thing you wanted people to know about intense barbecue, what would it be? There were a lot more than barbecue. I love yeah. it. I love we, it. We have a full catering menu. We can do everything from prime rib to crab imperial. Yes. And I have had some of that. I got to say, A plus, delicious. All right. We want to thank Rob and Robin, who are still married after working yes. in this yeah. trailer for <laughs> as many years. Right, right. So you got to hand it to them. They got to be doing something right. And go to Facebook, Intense Barbecue, check them out, see where they're going to be, and get their food. You'll love it. Thank you. All right. I want to thank Rob and Robin. We were at Green Meadows Petting Farm uh, for that. It was about 60 mile an hour winds. So, um, yeah, I know that was a little bit of struggle on uh, the mics for them. But uh, that is it for today's Good Morning Frederick. I really want to 
Thank you for watching. Tomorrow, I'll be talking with Jennifer Zimmer from Helping Hands, Caring Hearts, an amazing nonprofit, and Corey from Burnside Events. Until then, be sure to search for Everything Frederick Live on TikTok and YouTube, and you can follow me on TikTok as well at dannygirl1124. Have an awesome day and be great, Frederick. Let's get the clothes this time. I missed the clothes yesterday. Here we go.